my life is a miracle. Every child has a story of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story. Welcome, everyone, to Shalom World G2G, where we give glory to God by having conversations with amazing people from around the world who are living their lives sold out for Jesus Christ in the professional world. I'm Pete Barak, and today we talk with Angelo Labuti, who is a 30-year-plus animator, storyteller, working on all sorts of big projects in big companies, but also passionately serving the Lord and using his talents to proclaim and build the kingdom. Angelo Labuti. At the early age of 16, Angelo Labuti's talent as a comic illustrator was recognized by Walt Disney Studios, which sparked a fire within him. It started when I was a kid, and I mean, when I, I saw the Disney movie, it was specifically it was the Cinderella movie, and uh, and I loved the way they perpetrated it. Say, and because I was drawing really well, I mean, it's like when people was drawing stick figures, I was ready to do portraits. So I said, say, I want, I, want, I want to do that job. After graduating with a degree in architecture and surveying in Italy, Angelo began his career working as an illustrator and graphic designer for many of Europe's most prestigious newspapers and magazines. He later moved to Canada and earned a degree in classical animation and film to further evolve his artistic talent and dream of directing. He then complemented this degree by following up with a three-year program studying method acting through the Meisner Technique. These formative years primed him for his 10 sequential years of experience in advertising as an art director, concept artist, and storyboard artist. He then moved on to work in his preferred career path in the motion picture industry under the same artistic job titles as production director, writer, DP, and directing. Always eager to accomplish more, Angelo also became a 3D animator as well as special effects, VR at Marvel, Rhythm and Hughes and Digital Domain Studios, Disney, Fox Entertainment and Paramount Studios, as well as teaching at various universities. Angelo worked with a few Oscar award winning directors like Jon Favreau, Bill Westenhofer, Chris Landreth and many more. Currently, he is busy with a directorial and DP venture of Eucharistic Miracles. The Eucharist is the core of our life. It's the medicine that God gives to us for be alive. There's no life in you, he said. I, I see it, no. Understanding, no. He says so, he's, it, it is true. A cinematic journey through live action Bible reenactments and the miracles of the Eucharist, utilizing 3D medical animation. Angelo Libuti, how are you today? Really well, really well. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. So you've been involved in dozens of projects and involved in all sorts of different work in Hollywood and, and off Hollywood, creating stories and, and helping people be drawn into a narrative. Where did this come from in your life? What inspired you to be a storyteller and what motivates you to this day? Well, I started when I was a kid. And I mean, when I, I saw the Disney movie, it was specifically it was the Cinderella movie. And there was a part when uh, the little mouse was helping uh, and it shows a really beautiful friendship. And I mean, how they can help together to to fix in a, some sort of bully things. I mean, that times I was a, a little, I was probably around uh, uh, seven, eight years old. And uh, there were lots of bullies in school and stuff. So it kind of really touched me. And uh, and I loved the way they perpetrated They say, and because I was drawing pretty well. I mean, it's like when people was drawing stick, Figures, I was ready to do a portraits. So I said, say, I want, I want, I want to do that job. Uh, so I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to go to America. 
and uh, are going to when Disney go to, because Disney die, I'm going to I'm going to take 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 it over him, and uh, I didn't take it over him, but I follow I follow most most of that dream. So most of us will never live in Hollywood, but many of us have heard stories of what it's like to live in Hollywood, and you've alluded to this already in your own uh, journey with the Lord. Could you speak a little bit more about what uh, has challenged you in that environment and how you've learned to overcome it? I mean, clearly you've you've stayed in it. I mean, I was looking at your your resume and you've been prolific in your work. And so obviously the Lord wants you to keep creating within this environment and he's sustaining you in some way. Could you speak to both the challenge and then how the Lord has carried you through this this environment? I think uh, he's he's testing you. At least te- he tests me over and over and over. And uh, uh, and how he does uh, was, uh, if, if I, I tell you a couple of beautiful s- scenarios. One, uh, uh, I got, uh, there was a the company I was working in Florida and there's some really difficulty and they end up to be go to, to bankruptcy down, down to I mean, this, this business, it's happened often the company go in bankruptcy because I mean, they try to get in a big uh, movies and, uh, and the, what end up to be, they undermine the cost. And uh, when after, I mean, uh, they go over time, they end up to don't have money and down there. So this company went bankrupt. It was one of the biggest company. They did the Iron Man. They did uh, all the all the Marvel things and stuff. Another one. And uh, um, so I had to come back to to California from Florida. And you couldn't know, find like imagine like 600 or so employees gone, looking for a job. Disney let off another 600 employees because they get a job in India and in China. And uh, Sony, I think it was let off a couple of 200 people. So you couldn't find a job for save your life. And uh, I, I start to pray about it. And I mean, nothing was happening. And uh, my bank was almost like a super dry, almost no, no money. And I'm out of money and I start to say, Oh man, is like a, what I gotta do? Please God, and I mean, help me, help me. I mean, it's uh, and a job came up, came by, and I thought, okay, that's he's giving me like a chance. And I was about beautiful job, amazing paycheck, a beautiful position. I was supposed to be ahead of this 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 uh, this production. I was about to sign, and something hit me. It was something weird. I didn't felt right, and I asked. Uh, so you guys, did you mind uh, show me some sample for what really you really going for it? And what they showed me was my jaw fell down. It was sweating, uh, sexing, uh, all that kind of stuff. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. I passed the, the contract back. I said, I can't, I cannot do it. That goes totally against anything. Uh, I, I believe it. I mean, I have nephews, uh, uh, stuff for me. They're always watching stuff I do. I cannot show this one, that's for sure. Therefore, I, ca- I cannot do it. And uh, eh, they were upset. They couldn't understand why I was doing it. So when I left, I mean, I, I went to mass. I mean, usually I was going mass early in the morning. But because I had to this meeting, I couldn't do it. And uh, I pray God. I said, look, I took a big bullet for you. Now I'm really in trouble. How hard is it to do a movie about Mary or Jesus? And uh, I kid you not. Timer, I'm three minutes walk from uh, uh, from my church. I received a phone call from a producer telling that I mean they are going to make in a, a movie about Mary, and they were thinking to hire me. And they asked me if I knew who Mary was, and I that was the fastest phone call ever. I mean, and uh, and that happened at the time soon. I mean, there was uh, a these times, I mean, I was again. I pray, I pray some, 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 some Padre Pio. I mean, there was again a really dry time at work. I mean, and that was some jobs offered. I didn't, I couldn't accept it. And as I prayed to him, uh, the following couple of hours after, a guy, a director, called me, offered me a job to be ahead of uh, for one Alvin and Chipmunks movie, for develop the story with him. 
And the beauty I found out after, he was an atheist, but his wife was a Catholic and opened up a, a chapel about San Padre Pio. It's his testing. I mean, he said, do you really love me? Do you really, how, how far are you willing to go? I mean, for it, I mean, would you really go until you're starving? I mean, would you take that bullet for me? I mean, and that, I saw that pattern. I mean, and this something is happening now, this movie we're making about the Eucharist movie to, to make it. I mean, there's been uh, many, many miracles, but so many uh, Judas, I mean, uh, that, uh, and uh, at the beginning it really hurt me, but now I say if Christ had this Judas, why I cannot have my Judas in my in my production? I mean, so it's a, a, it's a reality. Life wasn't supposed to be a paradise here. I mean, so we are called to to struggle and to go through a part of what Christ did. I mean, that's why you say carry on the cross, be like me. And I mean, so, yeah. Yeah, you can't help but notice that big, uh, illustrious beard that you have growing there. You told me before we jumped on that this is for the Eucharist movie that you're, the Eucharistic Miracles movie that you're producing. Could you tell us a little bit more about that movie, but in particular, what you hope the movie will accomplish as a Catholic and somebody who sounds very devoted to the Eucharist and to regular mass attendance. Can you can you talk a little bit about why you took on this project and what you hope the Lord will do through it? I was watching uh, this, uh, a, this YouTube channel called The Joy of the Faith and the run from this uh, amazing guy. I mean, we start to become such a good friends, almost it become my brother, uh, Ray. And uh, a really, really awesome, awesome guy. He truly loved God. And uh, so I saw the quality of uh, the interview he did for the Eucharist Miracles, and I saw it was not the best. I mean, I'm, for me, I'm used to do some different standard, and I proposed to do who, to him a partnership. And as we start to speak, in, I start to see the picture better and better. I mean, say, let's not just stop into making uh, a, the better look interview to all these doctors. But uh, let's uh, cre recreating uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, live action for all the Bible passes that uh, God or the Bible speaking about the U Eucharist. And uh, nobody has done something like that. Every production, they try to please in the Protestant, and the Catholic. And you are, what you're going to have in all this is like a lukewarm, smushy, fake uh, Bible. I mean, it's like a, that's not what God asked him. That was not God who was, God was teaching. And uh, at, that, at this point, I, I'm starting to become pretty bold in my faith. And uh, I know that, I mean, who bring my job is him, not the producers. Who brings the money on my table is him. So he can make it become the worst producer in Hollywood, be Catholic in three seconds. Almost like what, what, what John the Baptist told the Pharisees. Don't you think Christ can make a, out of this rock be a, 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 a Jew? So it's leading to the disillusion that uh, we need uh, to please in others in order to get what we like, what we love. It's, it's such a false narrative, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, I don't care about it anymore. I, I don't have to please nobody, I gotta please just God. He's going to provide, if he wants me to starving, to having hard times, that's, it be. I mean, it's like he can do whatever he wants, but he's not the producer, he's not Hollywood, he's not DreamWorks, he's not Disney that is causing uh, my being happy or sad or that one. That's it just God allowed because he wants me to grow in my faith. So when I spoke with Ray, I said to say, okay, let's do it. Let's make in this, uh, uh, this movie and let's add this Bible passage. He was so in fire. He said, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, let's do it. So, let's do it. so we started to brainstorm ideas. He brought it up some of the Bible passages. Uh, I about other, other ones, I mean, and uh, and then I, I start to developing the script, I mean, which I think is out of this world. When the actor read the first time 
the script, which is all based purely 100% Catholic. St. Thomas of Aquinas, Catena Aurea from St. Thomas of Aquinas, the commentary for St. Thomas of Aquinas, some phrases for uh, St. Therese of Avila, which is one the teacher of, of our church, and uh, the Due Reim Bible. So all the dialogue is perfect for Due Reim, which is the most closest one to what we know to be the, the right Bible, uh, not the King James. I'm sorry for people thinking that that's it is, but that's absolutely off. And uh, and then uh, as well, uh, I put uh, some things for a beautiful book. I don't know if you guys read uh, from uh, Fulton Sheen. It's called The Life of Christ. It's outstanding. Some of the things he say, or he, Christ appeared to him, or somebody else appeared to him, because I mean, that's, it feels so right. And it felt perfectly to fill in some of those gaps that, that the other teaching were not there. I mean, so it's, a, it's, I think it's a beautiful journey. I mean, I think it just is a spiritual. I, I didn't really wrote it. I just put all the piece together and, uh, and try to stay as far as possible to try to be me, the creator, I mean, they was already done. Everything is there. I mean, the stuff with St. Thomas, St. Thomas, most people probably don't know, but St. Peter, St. Paul appeared to him and they dictate and explain it, the Bible. So what the Catena Aurea and part of the commentary are what the actual St. Peter and Paul told to him. So it's, you can't go wrong, man. It's such a beautiful, it's, it's, a, it's a poetry. Everything is like a, the stuff that is saying, I mean, so same things we are trying to adopt in for the road of Amos, for uh, a, for the Moses part of it, I mean, where they teach that you don't have to just paint him with blood as the most Protestant believes, but you have to actually eat the lamb, which that's what us Catholics, we believe in. I mean, that I mean, we are to consuming Christ as on the Eucharist. It's not just something superficial. I mean, or something uh, uh, symbolic, and I mean, it's actually you are to eat, and I mean, it's like a, the Old Testament married the New Testament perfectly, as you perfectly know, yeah. I wonder if you could just give uh, a word of encouragement or a word of hope to uh, everyone who's watching this. Clearly, the Lord has brought you into a supernatural experience of faith. And faith, we always know, is a working of God, a grace poured into our hearts to believe. But clearly you are walking by a pretty radical level of faith and trust in him and belief that he has you, he will sustain you, and he will take care of you, whether, like you said, you, you die tomorrow or many, many years from now. And with everything going on in the world and all that could cause anxiety and frustration and fear and restlessness about the future, could you just give a word to everyone about Again, what sustains you, what gives you hope, and a little encouragement to, to keep on. My suggestion is this one. Don't double guessing what the saints say. Even if you don't understand it, as I don't understand it perfectly, the Eucharist and has many people that don't. But if Padre Pio say, if you understanding what I see, what I know, you risk to go to a minefield and get killed to go to mass. I don't longer questioning, accepting it. I mean, that's we, if we don't know that much, it's because God wants you to have in faith, trust in Him. So, taking His word, accepting when He said, This is my flesh, don't do like the Pharisees, trusting what He said. Go, the Eucharist is the core of our life, it's the medicine that God gave to us for be alive. There's no life in you, he said. I, I see it, no. Understanding, no. He says so, he's, it, it is true. Just go to adoration, go to mass as often you can. I, a period of times I was going from 11 o'clock at night until six o'clock in the morning, go home, have a shower every day and go to work without even sleeping. Trust in him. God he is in charge. God is in charge. He knows what we need. Don't question him. If you do, you're making him be a human. He is not a human. He 
He loves you. He says he's never going to give a piece of rock if you ask for a bread. Never going to give a snake if you ask for a fish. Let him prove to you that he can do it. Don't minimize him like a, a human being. Don't give a weakness that he doesn't have. He create a universe. Don't think about it. He cannot provide for you, for your family, and for anybody else. Thank you, Angelo. It's been delightful talking to you. Keep up the good work. Uh, don't stop creating. Don't stop following the Lord. And we'll be praying for you and Ray and the whole team. And uh, can't wait to see what the Lord has in store. Yeah, so please go to the new website. We have a new website. It's the Eucharistic Miracles Movie. Dot com. Please donate that there. I mean, we have we, we explain everything already, how far we went and what we've done. We need your help to finish this movie and make it happen. May God bless everybody. What an inspiring conversation about trusting the Lord in the good times and in the bad. I love the question he asked where he said, how much do you love the Lord? How much do you love Jesus? And how much do you trust him? And what an encouraging word to be able to put our faith in the Lord who provides good things to his children who asks. We have a good father. Let's remember that and let's give glory to God. This has been G2G. I'm Pete Burak. We'll see you next time. all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you.